Not everyone has boatloads of money to spend on Pokemon Go. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the people who spend no money and how they fully take advantage of Pokemon Go with my top free to play tips in Pokemon Go. And there's also another reason we're making this video, you guys probably know. Let's get right into it, starting with tips for getting good Pokemon as a free to play player. Number one is going to be to get lucky Pokemon. If you don't know, when you trade away a Pokemon, there's around a 5% chance a Pokemon goes lucky. That chance can be guaranteed if you guys become best friends and then become lucky friends, the next trade you hit is gonna be guaranteed lucky. Lucky Pokemon are gonna be half the amount of starters to power up and are going to have an IV floor of 12, 12, 12, meaning it's a lot easier to get good IV Pokemon. As a free-to-play player, always power up lucky Pokemon. It'll save you starters in the long run. Also, a very underrated strategy is to get free legendary Pokemon from PvP. If you hit rank 20 in the Go Battle League, when you get a encounter reward on the reward track, which I believe you have to win three out of five battles to get, there's a chance you get the current legendary in raid. So yes, if you don't have anyone to raid with, remote raid, etc., though you can't really do a lot of remote raids anymore, you can still get the current legendary by doing PvP. For example, if I were to win three out of five PvP battles right now, I could potentially get a Lugia. And it can be shiny, has the same shiny rates as regular shinies, and you can use your own Pokeballs to catch it so it cannot run from you. Next tip, most important one, I would probably say catch everything. People underestimate how much catching does to an account in Pokemon Go. The best players in the world with the craziest accounts and most amount of Stardust and XP are not usually the ones who raid the most. It's the people who catch the most Pokemon. Cairo Arena, which I believe has over 2 million catches, has so much Stardust, has over, I think, 100 thousand Rattata candy and their account is absolutely insane. So when I tell you catch everything as a free to play player, catch everything that you could possibly fit in your bag, transfer if you need more space because catching is really the lifeblood of this game. Finally, if you can't always be catching and going out to grind 18 million hour days, you can get an auto catcher. Now, yes, this does go a little bit against free to play because you are spending money on the game, but not technically directly. Buying something like a gotcha, a duomon or any sort of auto catcher, it can be an official one too, allows you to turn that machine on to automatically spin Pokestops and automatically throw Pokeballs at Pokemon. There's about a 50% catch rate on auto catchers, but any extra Pokemon you're catching is going to add starters to your account, XP, candy, etc. So if you can afford a little bit of money on the game and want to go a little bit away from free to play, auto catchers would probably be the first thing I would spend money on. That moves us on into Stardust tips. How do we get a lot of Stardust as a free to play player? Number one thing, feeding berries into gyms. When you have extra berries, things like Nana berries, which are honestly never ever used, I really recommend dumping them into gyms. You get about, I think it's 25 Stardust. Don't quote me, I don't have the numbers right off the top of my head. And you can feed 10 Pokemon, 10 berries each every single 30 minutes. That can be a lot of stars every single 30 minutes. And although you do need the berries to be able to dump and extra berries that you're not going to be using, it is still an easy method to get extra starters, especially if you have Pokemon in gyms, you can actually teleport to that gym, drop your berries in, and then go back and get a little bit extra stardust. Every little bit of stars counts as a free to play player. So definitely dump berries into gyms if you can. Also, PVP is an underrated method for stardust. When you win battles in a row, you can get stars from a reward track in PVP. And also when you're done a set, you'll get a certain amount of stardust. This can also be times three or times four during Go Battle Days, which happen about every two months in Pokemon Go. Go Battle Days, you're able to do 100 total battles, and we usually have three times or four times PvP stardust. You have to take advantage of Go Battle Days, and also you can get Elite TMs from Go Battle Days and PvP. When you hit rank 19, you will get an Elite Charge TM, and when you hit rank 20, at the end of the season, you will get an Elite Fast TM. Also during Go Battle Days, there's usually timed research to get Elite TMs. Elite TMs allow your Pokemon to learn legacy moves, which are normally moves very hard to get, and the only only way to get them as free to play players is during events like these and a couple other events that come around for free. But normally they're really hard to get as a free to play player. Also, when a PvP season is over, which is every single three months, I believe our next season is going to be at the start of June, you will get your end of season PvP rewards. This can be a great time as a free to play player to use your star piece in Pokemon Go because your PvP end of season rewards are going to be massive amounts of Stardust if you ranked up to a decently high rank. For example, I ended last season at rank 20 and I believe I got like 135,000 Stardust on a star piece, which is a lot of just extra to start us to get, but definitely take advantage of it if you enjoy PvP. Now let's talk about stacking Pokemon. If you don't know, when you get a field research task encounter, if you run from that Pokemon, it'll be put into your stacked tasks. This is a long list of tasks that are going to be back to back to back. They're pretty much just Pokemon encounters that you're holding on to. These Pokemon encounters can then be re-encountered at a later date, and there's specific Pokemon you want to stack to take advantage of this tip. Specifically, Stardust boosting Pokemon, which I will go through on screen right now. We have Paris, which gets you 500 Stardust. Parasite gets you 700. Meowth gets you 500. Persian gets you 700. Alolan Meowth, 750. 50, Lowland Persian, 950, Shelter, 1000, Cloister, 1200, Star U, 750, Starmie, 950, Delibird, 500, Shroomish, 500, Breloom, 700, Sableye, 750, Chimeco, 1000, Combi, 750, 950 for Vespa Queen, 2100 for Audino, 750 for Trubbish, 950 for Garbodor, 500 for Fungus, 700 for Amoongus, and there's also another one, More Lull and that person's evolution, Shinotic, gets you, I believe, I believe it's 500 and 700, similar to Shroomish. If you get these Pokemon in field research, make sure you stack them, run from them, hold on to those encounters for a later 
date. You can also stack stage one Pokemon, which gets you 300 stars per catch, or stage two Pokemon, which gets you 500 stars per catch, just because they're higher stage. You can then wait for three times catch stars events, two times catch stars events. Generally, if you're free to play, wait for the three times and catch your Pokemon then. Saving something like an Audino for a three times catch stars event is gonna get you 6,100 stars per Audino catch, which is huge gains for a free to play player. So if you can and you get encounters with a Pokemon through field research, make sure you stack them, hold onto them for three times catch stars events. Stay tuned to the channel here because I will announce when those Pokemon are available in field research and we're stacking and also when these events do come along. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. That moves us on to XP tips. As a free to play player, what are the best methods to get XP? Number one is going to be the 12 candy to evolve Pokemon in Pokemon Go. These Pokemon include Caterpie, Weedle, Pidgey, Wurmple, Whismur. If you get any of those Pokemon, you catch any of those Pokemon, save them, hold on to them. Since every single month we get a two times evolve XP spotlight hour. If you can put on a lucky egg for the whole hour there, that's gonna cost you two lucky eggs. You can go ahead and uh, spam evolve these 12 candy Pokemon and get a lot of XP. Two times evolve XP is gonna be 2000 XP. And with a lucky egg, that's 4000 XP every single evolution. I know people who get 600,000 XP in one hour with this strategy. And it costs you nothing. All you have to do is be aware of saving these Pokemon that are very easy to evolve. You can also evolve any other Pokemon if you have the candies, but these are gonna be the cheapest and you're gonna need two lucky eggs. Also, there is a way to stack two daily raid passes in Pokemon Go and take advantage of this during raid hour. I know a lot of people are not gonna be raiding because they're gonna be protesting, which all the power to you, I respect you. But if you do not use a daily raid pass in one day, what you can do is the next day, use that daily raid pass and then spin the gym and you'll get another daily raid pass because every single day, if you don't know, you get one free daily raid pass from a gym. Take advantage of these raid passes because doing a legendary raid gets you 10,000 XP, which is a lot of XP you can use to grind. Also, some people like to do this strategy in which they do not raid on the Tuesday and then on Wednesday when it's raid hour, they're able to do two free daily raids with their local raid group or whatever. Again, I know a lot of people are not gonna be raiding and going against raiding, but if you are free to play, I still recommend, you know, just use the raid pass, use a raid pass. It's a free raid pass, you get some free XP, you get a free Pokemon. You can actually get technically seven free legendaries plus any ones you get from PvP every single week if you do a raid, but obviously you're gonna need people and people to invite, which is obviously not as available anymore since people are gonna be capped on their remote raids. Friendship bonuses. A lot of people are probably wondering when I was gonna mention this. If you don't know in Pokemon Go, when you hit ultra friends or best friends or great friends, you'll get an XP bonus. This XP bonus can be multiplied on a lucky egg and I definitely recommend stacking them, holding onto them and timing them in Pokemon Go. For example, this person here, Hailstorm, LND, I am, if you come into the account, you can click on the hearts and then you can see how many days until I'm best friends with this person. It says four more days. For example, this person, Jujube, I'm only one day away from best friends with them. So I definitely recommend messaging these people. You can use Niantic Campfire as well if you would like and saying, hey, can we coordinate a friendship bonus? Then you can go ahead and hold on to those friendship bonuses until you do one of those things we talked about, the raid hour with the two raid passes or even during a double Evolve XC spotlight hour. Then when your lucky eggs are down during those events, you can go ahead and hit your friendship bonuses, get those huge amounts of XP, 200,000 for best friends, 100,000 for a ultra friend on a lucky egg and just take the gains that way. Coordinating friendship bonus is probably one of the best ways to get XP as a free to play player. And honestly, one of the best ways to get XP overall in Pokemon Go, so definitely take advantage. We also do have three times cash XP events though in Pokemon Go. If you don't know, every time you hit an excellent throw in Pokemon Go, you get a thousand XP. And during a three times catch XP event, which is normally a community day, you'll get three times. With lucky egg, that's six times. So that's 6,000 XP per excellent throw. Excellent throws are completely free. All you need is Pokeballs. So if you can have your lucky eggs saved up for um, three times catch XP events, hit a bunch of excellent throws. You could even coordinate your friendship bonuses for three times catch XP events. Just a lot of coordination needs to be done, but if you can coordinate all these things, you can get huge amounts of XP. Also, sometimes you'll get XP from special research stories. Specifically, there's one called the Jumpstart Research, which I believe comes back like during GoFest or near GoFest. This special research will get you a bunch of XP and all the claim rewards on special researches and any sort of research can be double on Lucky Egg. So again, if you can coordinate and make that coordination where you have a bunch of XP need to be claimed from special research, or you got some friendship bonuses ready to hit and it's like a three times catch XP event, put on your Lucky Egg, take all the gains in. It's gonna require some coordination on your part, but definitely take advantage and try to coordinate as many XP bonuses as you can on a single Lucky Egg gonna be the best way to do it. Now that brings us in to one of the best ways slash only ways to get gym coins in Pokemon Go for free and that's gonna be gym coining going through gyms. If you don't know when you put a Pokemon in gyms you will get gym coins when that Pokemon gets knocked out for a max of 50 per day. Every single hour a Pokemon has been in the gym you're gonna get six Poke coins so it's about one coin per 10 minutes. When you get knocked out of a gym you will gain those Poke coins and you will get those Poke coins but it's all up to a max of 50 per day which is 
kind of sucky. I don't know why they have that. So yes, you can only get 50 gym coins a day if you get knocked out and you need to be in the gym for, I believe it's like eight hours. And then when you get knocked out, you'll get the max of 50. But I definitely recommend dropping Pokemon in gyms, trying to hold gyms every single day so you can get those gym coins. The best strategy here, if you want to guarantee your gym coins is to coordinate with players from other teams. I know a lot of people in their local area will meet up with, you know, some instinct players, some mystic players, some valor players and say, hey, why don't we rotate who's in the gym at what point um, so we can all get our gym coins. So let's say I would go in the morning, drop my Pokemon in, wait eight hours, and then the Valor player would go to the gym, knock me out. I'd get my coins, they would drop in, wait eight hours, I would go back, knock them out, et cetera, et cetera. And there's like a whole cycle to it. Obviously, you know, it's not a perfect strategy and some people could just be coming along and knock you out and kind of ruin the strategy. But if you can do that with your local gyms, find all the players in your area, message them and try to coordinate some gym coining. The best way to do it for sure, um, getting free Poke coins in Pokemon Go because that's really the only way to get free coins. There is another way to use Google Opinion Rewards, which is an app and there's other survey apps. I do have a full video actually that I will link up here about survey apps. What these apps do, pretty much do surveys and it'll give you money that you can then invest in a Pokemon Go. So if that is something you do want to do as a free to play player, go for it. It's not going to be huge amounts of money. You're not going to be getting, you know, $100 worth of Pokecoins, but a dollar here and there can help and can also help you towards those community day tickets. Now, what do you do with those coins? A lot of people always ask me as a free to play player, what's the best way to dump those coins? The huge question always comes up, item bag versus Pokemon storage. Which ones are going to be worth doing it? And I'd always recommend, first of all, invest into those. As a free to play player, it's always best to invest into permanent things into your account that will help you permanently, not into temporary things like a raid pass, which will get you one or two Pokemon or some incubators. But if we're talking between item bag and Pokemon storage, I would definitely recommend always item bag. In my opinion, Pokeballs are some of the most important resources in the game and having a big item bag that can store a lot of Pokeballs means you have to go restock less often and you'll usually not be running out as much. Pokemon storage, on my opinion, you can always transfer Pokemon. You can always take advantage, look in your storage, be like, hey, I need some more space. Let me transfer and delete some Pokemon. It always feels worse to be going in there and transferring Pokeballs or deleting Pokeballs or potions or all that stuff to try to make space. It's a lot easier to get more Pokemon and catch more Pokemon than it is to get more Pokeballs. You know, Pokemon are everywhere. Pokeballs are only available at Pokestops, which not all of you have access to. Prioritize your item bag if you can. You should still put some Pokecoins into your Pokemon storage if you can, but always make sure your item bag is higher more space than your Pokemon storage, in my opinion. I'll have a video up here as well if you need help transferring Pokemon on how to manage your storage appropriately if you're struggling with that and that's something you struggle with. Now, finally, let's talk about some other tips in Pokemon Go. What are some other things you can take advantage of? Number one, how to get your buddy excited for free in Pokemon Go. If you don't know, there is a method to get your buddy excited for free. It's the same thing that will happen when you give your Pokemon a Poffin, but obviously Poffins cost money. I'll link below a video on the strategy, but pretty much how it works is you'll go into your buddy, you'll give them a treat, you'll take a picture of them and you'll play with them. And then you're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. Then every 30 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and redo that. And what this is doing is it's leveling up this hidden meter in the background that will get your buddy excited. After you do this for about three hours, I believe six rounds of it, your buddy will get excited for completely free, which means you can get double hearts on your buddy. And also it'll only be half the distance to get the candy and XL candy for walking your buddy. I definitely recommend taking advantage of this buddy for free method. Walking your buddies is also one of the best ways to grind mega energy as a free to play player. If you've mega evolved the Pokemon and have it in your mega Pokedex, when you walk a Pokemon from an evolution line that has a mega form, you do get mega energy every time you hit that candy threshold that normally you would just get one candy, but now you're getting mega energy. For example, I have a mega Gyarados evolved. I'll walk a Magikarp or a Gyarados. I can get free mega Gyarados energy. As a free play player and someone who can't really do a lot of raids, that's one of the best ways to get mega energy. Also field research task is another great way to get mega energy as a free to play player. Every single month, the field research tasks do change, but this does lead to certain tasks like power Pokemon 10 times to get you 25 mega energy for a certain mega. So always keep an eye out on the silkroad.com and what Pokemon are available and their mega energy from field research tasks every single month because you want to take advantage of it as a free to play player and someone who can't do as many raids. And that leads us to our final tip here, which is going to be be patient. What money does in Pokemon Go is it accelerates your account. It allows you to grow an account a lot faster through getting incubators, through getting raids, through getting all sorts of bonuses and items that help you out. As a free to play player though, you have to practice patience because everything is just going to be slower for you. When a raid comes out, do as many raids as you can, but there is a cap on how many you can do. So just be patient. Everything always does come back at one point. A lot of people always ask me, when is Mewtwo in raids? When is Rayquaza in raids? I don't know personally, but I know for a fact it's coming back. So just be patient grow your account slowly, play as much as you would like to play every single day and as much as you can do every day, take advantage of all these tips I mentioned and just be patient because one day your account will be as good as you wish it to be. Watch the video below if you wanna know how to clear your storage effectively um, and that's gonna be pretty much it for me. Follow up my tips guys, peace.